This dude's name is Bones. He's he, he's Z's boyfriend. Come on, Z. Listen, I'm not one to judge off appearance, but some people, you just got to judge them. To any of my female viewers. <laughs> I'm not one to judge off appearance, but some people you gotta judge them. Holy shit. All right, man, we got us a Derek FB video. FDB, sorry. The creepiest kids movie. Let's get it. My relationship with the horror movie genre was like my relationship with my father. I'll leave it at that. The point is, if oh. I had to do with horror, I was afraid of it. I hated it. I hated watching it. I wanted nothing to do with it. But there was one movie that was different. One movie that I couldn't even finish because of how scared I used to get. But at the same time, wait. Is he about to talk about Monster? Monster House was peak, bro. It was low key a little scary, but it was peak. You know what, no bro? One kid scary movie that actually scared the shit out of me? Coraline. Coraline, bro. I'm like, yo, why is this as scary as it is, bro? Coraline really had me fucked up, bro. I would always come back and watch one movie that gave me that same creepy feeling that Coraline gave me. In that movie was Monster House. When I tell y'all this movie used to have me sobbing, hiding, sobbing, I'm not lying. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going over Monster House. And if Coraline's the scariest kids movie, this is the creepiest kids movie. So y'all know the drill. Grab your popcorn, get your stuffed animal, and try not to... I bet you thought I was gonna jump scare. <laughs> the movie opens with an orange leaf floating after falling off a tree. So, you know what that means. Oh. Yeah, this movie's taking place in the spookiest season of all. The Fall. Which, for the record, is at least top two out of all four seasons. And it ain't top two, and it ain't number two. It ain't two. Don't ask. You see this gap tooth little girl riding her tricycle down the suburban neighborhood singing. La, 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 la. When she gets stuck on a patch of grass, which would normally be no big deal. But she didn't get stuck just on any patch of grass. She got stuck in front of this creepy, old, abandoned looking house. The type of house you see crackheads living out of. And what comes out that house may resemble a crackhead, but <laughs> it's in fact worse. An angry old white man. This is Mr. Nebercracker, a grouchy, creepy old man who owns the house. And he used to terrify me as a kid. I don't know if it was a teeth. Oh I think it was. He was a little terrified. I will give him that. But I, I feel like he was also like frail. So I would have beat his ass. It was a teeth. But the sight of this man was enough to make me start having those nightmares. He starts yelling at the little girl to get off my lawn. And he asks her if she wants to be eaten alive. Little girl says, Nah, and runs uh -huh. away. As the old man is walking back inside, we see the POV of someone watching him through a telescope. And it's our main character, DJ, who's spying on the old man and apparently has been for a while. You know, I get it. The video games weren't as cool back then, but... Bro, just read a book or oh, something. God. What are you doing? Just crying on your neighbor is crazy. If that shit that creepy, I don't want nothing to do with it. Why would I try to figure that shit out? His parents were about to leave on a trip, call him downstairs, and he starts telling them how there's something strange happening with that house across the street. And that old man never cracker keeps stealing kids' tricycles. His mom pretty much tells him to go touch some grass and stop spying on old people. That's what I'm saying. And after his parents leave, we meet DJ's best friend, Chowder. He's named after food because he's fat, by the way. Standard practice. DJ and him start to... Chowder my dog, I ain't gonna lie. Oh, so it's a girl house. <laughs> that nigga's hilarious, bro. Discussing Halloween and how DJ's too old for it now. Too old. Nick, I'm gonna be trick-or-treating at least until I get my pension. I don't know what DJ's talking about. And while trying to cheer up DJ with his super tight handles. Hey, okay, okay, let's child James. Chowder accidentally shoots the basketball off his face into Never Cracker's lawn. Well... I guess he got a new ball. Let's oh, go, Chowder. God. Chowder starts begging DJ to go get his ball back for him. And after some convincing, DJ decides to go. But as he's running to get the ball, old man Nebercracker comes out the shadows and... Nigga wasn't even in the house. He was just on the porch, waiting, watching. Spots him. Nebercracker starts attacking DJ. And in his panic, DJ accidentally messes up Nebercracker's lawn. Uh-oh. Nebercracker starts flipping out. He picks up DJ and just starts yelling, What to be a dead person? Why can't you just stay away from me? Nebercracker out of nowhere just collapses, and he doesn't get up. They even called in an ambulance. DJ and Chowder were in shock. They actually just witnessed someone's HP go to zero uh -huh. IRL. The house wasn't too happy about it either. DJ was going through it. He feels like it was his fault. He feels like he just murdered an old man. What's so crazy is like, I, that I, I thought this nigga was dead. This is a really good fucking movie. It was, it, it, a lot of shit happened right at the beginning though. 
if you think about it, a lot of shit happened. But this was a really good fucking movie. And Chowder, being the supportive friend that he is, tells DJ, Hey, you're not a murderer. It's called manslaughter. Get it right. <laughs> Chowder runs home. At the same time, DJ's babysitter, Elizabeth, a.k.a. Z, gets there. DJ tries to fill her in on what just happened, but she ignores him and tells him to go upstairs. And starts playing some heavy effing rock, man. We see upstairs, DJ's officially retiring his old man spying gear since <laughs> my boy just caught a body. And old oh, man God. Nevercracker is no longer with us. At least, that's what it seemed like at first. Because that very same night, DJ falls asleep randomly. And after having a nightmare of a huge chubby hand crushing him, he gets awoken by a phone call. He picks up the phone and hears nothing on the other Robin. side. So, he hangs up. But the phone rings. You're going to die in seven days. <laughs> he's again. Same person calling. He picks it up again and still no response from the other side. At this point, he knew someone had to be pranking him. So, he calls the number back. And in one of the creepiest scenes I've ever seen, when DJ calls the number back, he hears ringing. Coming from the house, bro. coming from the empty house across the street. Do you know how terrifying that is? The man you just hit with the Mr. Mosley treatment, his empty house is calling you. Like, who is out here giving out my number? This is why you should never, ever prank call anywhere except Chinese spots. That junk is hilarious. As DJ is realizing what's going on, out of the shadows come a pair of hands that just grab him. But it's just some guy in Chowder's mask. Oh my, put the mask back on, please. Oh God, uh. this nigga was, oh my God, this nigga was ugly. Look at, oh my God. I forgot how ugly this nigga was. Look, oh my God. Holy. Uh. This dude's name is Bones. He's, he, he's Z's boyfriend. Come on, Z. Listen, I'm not one to judge off appearance, but some people, you just gotta judge them. To any of my <laughs> female viewers. Nigga said, I'm not one to judge off appearance, but some people, you gotta judge them. Holy shit. First, if you see a guy like this, just run. Run and don't look back. You don't know with someone like this. He could have a drug problem, be a vampire, or work at Spencer's. It's too much of a risk to take. Z tells DJ to not snitch or she'll snitch that he's up past his bedtime, but DJ tells Z he's only up because he's been receiving phone calls from Nevercracker's house, which may sound normal. Uh, on second thought, not really. Why would an old man be calling a 12 year old at 11 p.m.? Until you until you realize it, then he's also fucking. You take into account the fact that Nebercracker is dead. dead. Z and Bones make it seem like they really believe him. A phone call from beyond the grave. But they really don't. Jeez, bro. And since no one's believing him about the phone calls, DJ calls up Chowder. He asks him if his parents are home. Chowder says no. His dad's at the pharmacy and his mom's at the movie theater with her personal trainer. What the? Movies with Crazy. your personal trainer? She's cheating on him. They agree to meet up at this place they call the Danger Zone. And at the same time, we see downstairs after Bones tells Z a story about Nevercracker taking his kite when he was little and possibly eating his wife, Bones gets thrown out for trying to pull some weird stuff with Z. And after, instead of going home, he decides to talk Mr. Nebercracker now that he's dead. Throwing bottles, stepping on his lawn, tearing up his lawn. He was finally getting back for his kite. But in a turn of events, when he looks up, he sees his kite. But for some reason, it's floating, it's glowing, and I think it's about as dumb as uh Georgie, bro. How you doing the same shit Georgie was doing in Pennywise as a grown ass man? At least Georgie was a kid. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to go get his fucking, his little, his little, uh, boat shit. But you grown as hell. He's drunk. Grown as hell. You see a kite you lost. I don't give a fuck how drunk you is. You see a kite you lost as a kid. Floating and glowing in a house you know where a nigga died. What are we talking about? Hey, do you know 44% of y'all aren't subscribed? Go ahead and hit that button. And also go check out my gaming channel where I upload things like Spider-Man gameplay, Fortnite, Modern Warfare, older games, newer games, anything I can get my hands on, I'll play it. Go check it out. And yeah, enjoy the rest of the video, man. And this was the worst mistake he could have made. When he approaches the house to get his kite back, Dash. the house eats him. Like ate him, he's gone. And that means DJ's suspicions were right, which makes things even scarier. Because after meeting up at the danger zone, which is just a construction site, DJ brings Chowder back to that very same house to prove to him that it's haunted. Chowder doesn't believe him at all because the house is not moving, and he's like, This is why nobody will sit next to us at lunch. Nah, these dudes are really the Greg what? and Rowley before Greg and Rowley. And in the worst decision ever, Chowder decides to prove the house is not haunted by going to ding dong ditch it. DJ tries to stop him, but it was too late. Chowder it was, was crawling. Gone. 
crawling like the house wouldn't see him, bro. Chrome. And he was so confident the house wasn't haunted that when he gets to the door, he starts taunting Never Cracker's death. Damn, Chowder, you cold. Yeah, now nah, that is kind of crazy. You thought the nigga died, so you reenacted his death? That's kind of insane if you really think about it, bro. That nigga was out of pocket. But the second he rings that doorbell and hears that Stranger Things season 4 sound effect, he knew. This house wasn't regular. Chowder starts to run as the house's rug tongue tries to grab him. What the? It fails to do so and it lets out a huge screech. I'm sorry. You're telling me not a single neighbor heard the three- Right! A fucking house. Crack and scream. Bed two bathroom house scream in the middle of the night in a suburban neighborhood? Cap! This is more than likely a white neighborhood, so the cops would have been called immediately. Hey, hi. Yeah. They're playing their hip hop again. Uh, they run inside and stay there until the sun comes up the next day, which is probably the best thing they could have done. And that's where we meet the biggest paper chaser, cheese getter, guala maker, oh Jenny, God. who's trying to sell candy to houses so they won't get TP'd on Halloween. I respect the hustle. <laughs> the boys meet her after watching her through a telescope. All right, come on, y'all. And they see her approaching the same house that just tried to attack them last night. So they rush outside and tell her to not get any closer to that house. She doesn't know what the freak they're talking about, so she asked if they're mentally challenged. Damn, Jenny, you cold. And since she was distracted, the house took this opportunity and attacks her, lifting her in the air in broad oh. day. Nah, I did, yo, wait. This house is bold as shit. In broad daylight is crazy. I just, house was on go. The house was static ready. Lifting, the, lifting her up in broad daylight. Daylight, by the way, still not a single person seeing this. No one walking their dog, going on an afternoon run, nothing. The boys save her from getting eaten, and thankfully Z comes out at the perfect time and the house stops attacking. Z goes home, so zero chance of getting help from her, and the boys and Jenny regroup upstairs. But before they could come up with a plan to stop the house, DJ and Chowder, especially Chowder, were trying to put the moves on <laughs> Jenny. Ugh, did you even brush your teeth? Back up, Peppy Le Pew. Jenny, obviously uncomfortable, leaves the room real I think it had mad breath in her face. Real quick, and the boys start fighting after Jenny finds a two liter full of piss on their desk. Come on, y'all. Jenny comes back and tells the boys, although they're clearly- Y'all only been in the house since last night, a two liter of piss? God damn. I was scared to go to the- Like, bro, that's a lot of fucking pee mentally challenged she's willing to stay and help them figure out what's going on for real stop this house bro please it just ate the dog bro oh, the ate dog. The dog. So they do the first the thing dog. one would think to do they burn the house down nah just kidding they call the cops the cops show up and it goes as great as you think it would go they don't believe it. dj even tries to show them how dangerous it is by getting on the lawn but this house is a smart one it doesn't even move a current it was locked in the cops still don't believe them of course and they tell them if they see them get near old man nevercracker's house again they're getting put in the slammer their first option was now out the window but luckily they had a backup plan an expert a professional who could really help them out they meet up with this guy named skull who's really just a third year who plays video games all day i'm sorry i'm sorry i hyped it up but he really does help them he tells them that from what he's understood from years of playing video games is that this house is most likely possessed by nevercracker and the only way to defeat it is to destroy its heart i mean <laughs> that's easy just tell the house to date a five five curly headed latina oh, okay. after finding out the house's heart is actually its furnace jenny and the boys come up with a plan yeah because the furnace definitely started the furnace started as soon as uh Never cracker died or died, you know what I mean? to defeat it. Using drugs from Chowder's dad's pharmacy and putting them in a dummy they made out of a vacuum, they plan on using it as a sort of Trojan horse, letting the house believe it's a kid, causing it to eat it, and once it does, the drugs will make the house go to sleep, allowing them to go in and take out the furnace. Great plan, it ought to work. I thought that too, but- Nigga really was going to put the house to sleep. That is insane. A bunch of narcotic cold medicine drugs and put the house to sleep. It's a house. Like, I get it, it's a lot, but at the end of the day, it's a house, bro. Once their plan was in motion and the dummy was getting closer and closer to the house, they were interrupted by no other than the dang cops. They find the kids once again near the house after they told them to stay the heck away earlier. And not only that, but they also find them in possession of stolen drugs. White, black, or purple, this is not a good look. They yep. tell them enough is enough and put them in the back of the cop car. And the kids were still trying to convince the cops that the house is a monster. Please, please believe us. And they still house didn't did them dirty them until 
they hear something coming from the house. You know, they assume it's a raccoon or something, and they do what cops do and go investigate. And the kids already knew what was about the to happen. The house did a dirty. The house starts attacking the cops, grabbing the rookie with his trees and the other with his rug tongue. And then it eats them. Crazy. This scene scared me even more than the one of the house eating bones. Because if it could eat two sticked up cops, what was I going to do? The house <laughs> then goes full monster mode and starts trying to eat the cop car that the kids are inside of. Not a neighbor, no one coming home from. Bro, nobody? Nobody, not a single person saw the house pick up a cop car and physically try to eat a cop car for like five minutes. Not a car drove by or nothing. From work, no, no one gonna see this. Luckily, the kids hop out the car last second before it gets freaking devoured, but unluckily, they get trapped inside the house. And this monster house is even scarier on the inside. Damn, Nevercracker didn't even try dusting or changing some of the wallpapers, jeez. The gang decides since they're inside, they might as well look for the heart like they planned. The only thing is the house is not asleep like they planned. They quietly sneak around the house and find out a few things. Firstly, they find out Nevercracker used to serve in the military. Kinda makes sense, appreciate your service, my boy. We also find out Nevercracker did in fact have a wife. What happened to her, we don't know yet. And after some more snooping around and almost getting caught because Chowder mistake the uvula for the heart. Come on, Chowder. Uh -huh. They eventually find themselves in the dark. Oh, it's a girl house. And creepy basement of the house. Where instead of finding the furnace, they find themselves surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands of toys Nevercracker has stolen throughout the years. Ugh, that don't sit right with me. But the creepiest thing they find down there is a cage. And not a dog cage. A human sized cage. The kids are obviously super hesitant to approach it. I mean, it's a human sized cage in the creepy man's basement. Uh, you don't want to open that. But eventually they do unlock it. And what they find traumatized me. I'm not going to lie. This, I did not expect the, the show, this movie to take this type of turn, bro. Like at all. I was like, you know, I'm like, oh, this is, this is getting crazy. Like what's going on? Where's the, where's the wife? And then I saw this part. I'm like, oh. Oh, and I assume everybody else who watched this movie when they were little, they find the body of Nevercracker's wife covered in cement. Constant. Yeah. The kids are obviously shocked to see the body down there because not only is it traumatizing, but it also proves Nevercracker didn't actually eat his wife. Something else happened to her. And while trying to piece together what could have happened, DJ trips, shattering the cement shell around Constance and revealing her skeleton underneath. How did Crazy. they green like this for a kid's movie? Messing with the body leads the house to realize the kids are still in there, so it starts looking for them. And after some hiding and almost being eaten because of Chowder, again, huh? Chowder, come on. The kids get Try, vomited out the house. trying to get his ball, bro. House thanks to Jenny pulling on the uvula. Phew, they somehow made it out, but things were not good. Chowder and DJ start arguing, and Chowder says he's done trying to take down this house. Jenny interrupts and tells them they're both acting like babies, and DJ says, We are babies. And then he starts to leave. All right, y'all, there's a killer house on the loose. This is not the time to be doing this. Not the time. I'm gonna be honest. Once you saw the house snatch up somebody, it would have been wraps right there. I'm good off all of this. I'm gonna just mind my business and sit off that side of the street, bruh. It clearly can't reach me if I'm not on the lawn. I'm gonna just say, you know, I'm gonna mind my fucking business. This is what the, this is the problem. Niggas don't know how to mind their business, bruh. But before DJ could cross the street to get back to his house, he nearly gets hit by a car. And not just any car, but an ambulance. And the person that comes out that ambulance is someone no one expected. Old man Nevercracker back from the dead. The hey. kids were so shocked to see him, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But no, Nevercracker is actually back. And that's when we figure it out. Nevercracker wasn't the one possessing the house. His deceased wife Constance was. He never killed her. He loved her. We learned they met back in the day when Nevercracker was still in the military. He met her at a circus freak show and she wasn't in the crowd. She was actually the freak being made fun of because she was fat. Okay, I- That's kind of crazy. Like, she don't even look too big, bro. Like, like it's not even like she had a beard or a mustache. She was just fat, bro. Like, a circus act because you're, you're chunky? I get the fact that she was putting up TLC numbers, but come on, bro. That's messed up. But it didn't matter because Nevercracker was in love. So in love that he eventually helped her escape the freak show and bought some land so they could build a house together. It was sweet. So sweet. But sadly, they did not get a happy ending. On one fateful Halloween afternoon, while they were building the house, some kids came by and started egging the place. The fact that kids came by with this- Fateful Halloween afternoon, while they were building- They were building their house. The house, some kids came- Nothing, nothing in sight at all. 
look at how empty this bitch is. Two random ass bushes. Niggas coming to egg nothing. Nigga was coming to egg nothing, bro. Where did you come from? How did you get here? And buy and started egging the place. I'm talking about yolk everywhere. It was terrible. And Constance, after all those years of being made fun of and getting tomatoes thrown at her, she was not about to let this stuff continue, especially not at her house. So she starts raging out. And before things could get any worse, Nevercracker steps in and tells her to calm down. They're just kids. And as long as he's in her life, she'll never get hurt. But the kids persisted and Constance did too. In her rage, she accidentally stumbles and falls into the foundation of the house putting the cement pourer on the way down, effectively trapping herself. So Nevercracker finished the house, and ever since then, Constance attacks people who come near the house, especially kids. <laughs> DJ realized that Nevercracker yelling, get off my lawn, all those years was in an effort to protect them, and so he offers to help him let her go. Constance did not rock with this at all. She oh goes God. monster, monster, Bro, this shit, like the whole movie was creepy. This part right here? Where, like, the whole porch turned into her teeth and, like, the trees turned into her full length. Terrifying, bro. Terrifying, bro. Okay? Mode, and she starts chasing Nevercracker and the kids throughout the neighborhood. So, trying to be the screeze is out the window now, huh? They run blocks all the way back to the danger zone. And that's where Nevercracker stops running and tries to convince Constance to let him make things right. Let him blow her up but of course she's not rocking with this and this almost leads to nevercracker getting eaten by his wife a chowder comes in with the excavator and holds her off nevercracker passes off the stick of dynamite to dj since he's out of commission and dj tells chowder to leave the house under the huge crane chowder starts dragging the house down a huge ditch on the way to the crane that and it causes crazy. the entire house to break apart yes they did it they did it nope or so they thought the house comes back as this huge wood Whoa. monster Crazy. And Chowder Whoa. is unable to hold her off any longer. Like you thought it couldn't get worse, but it it dead ass did. Like this huge dip. is already terrifying. It's on the way to the crane, and it causes and the, the whole entire thing house collapses. to break apart. Yes, they did it. They did it, or so they thought. The house comes back as this huge wood monster. How do you happen to make something that was fucking terrifying even more terrifying, bro? Monster. Pause? And Chowder is unable to hold her off any longer, what? so he just starts running. At the same time, DJ just climbed the crane, and after a motivational peck on the lips from Jenny, my bad DJ mentally challenged Rizzler, he musters up the courage to crawl on the crane, and with an assist from Jenny, he swings down and drops a dynamite in the chimney of the house, effectively saving Chowder and stopping the house. <laughs> yes, they did it. They did it. But while the smoke is clearing, they hear something. They look over and see Mr. Nebercracker and the ghost of Constance dancing together before she fades away. A truly sad moment. Very sad. You know what's so crazy? It's never, he just wanted to live in peace with his bed, bro. He found the love of his life, bought her land, built, was trying to build a house with her, and lost his wife, bro. Never remarried, tried to keep her spirit alive and happy by making kids get away. He just wanted his bed, bro. Crazy. So does she go to heaven? Or Nevercracker gives the kids a big thank you for freeing him and his wife. And the movie ends with the kids and Nevercracker giving some of the toys back. The boy saying bye to Jenny. And DJ realizes he's not too old for Halloween. That's what I'm saying. But hold up, hold up. Some of y'all. The way this ended made me think there was going to be a monster house too, bruh. But like, also at the same time, there was no reason for there to be a monster house too. Y'all may be wondering, what happened to everyone that got eaten? Well, I didn't notice until recently, which is probably why I thought this movie was even scarier. But they all made it out. The dog, the cops, and even the bones. Yeah. As you guys can see, though, this movie, this movie was traumatizing. And it's the reason I'm scared of the suburbs to this day. Comment mm -hmm. down below any more movies you want me to go over. Or you could even DM me some on Instagram. Yep. <laughs> I made an Instagram. Go follow that. And moral of the story... What the? Where am I? What is this? Oh my God! <laughs> okay. W video. Shout out, uh, shout out, Derek. Also, let me know if you want me to watch. He has a a one about Coraline. It's the scariest kids movie. This one is the creepiest. The other one, Coraline is the scariest. If you want me to go over that, let me know in the comments. Uh, also, let me know by liking the video. And, uh, yeah, WVids. <laughs>